Hey guys. Oh crap. Oh. Almost had it. Bye. Almost almost nailed it. Now production's freaking out. I don't know if the cameras are still on, but we're here. We're doing it. Perry <laughs> Nemirov is here for the first oh time ever God. on Collab TV Perry! Talk Daily. I actually have not gotten up in the last hour. Hour I just like scooched around the table to the we other just, side. Like, pushed you over yeah. on your little scooter where you were like, no, got my back. Oh, look, the white <laughs> shot looks perfect. Adam, it looks perfect. We nailed it. We nailed it. Uh, also here, of course, our mother of ginger dragons, Miss Grace Hancock. <gasps> oh, hey guys. Uh, tweet me your questions uh, at Mrs. Grace Face. Hashtag Collider TV Talk. Hashtag Ginger Mother of Dragons. Also, hashtag you sort of made a dragon noise when you were like, ah! It's not like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not as good as yours, but I'm working on it. Yeah. Oh, hashtag Saucy Thursday. Oh, yes. Today is Saucy Thursdays. We just came up with that. An S for every day of the week. Maybe some mimosas here in the near future, depending on the show. Maybe the Riverdale premiere will chug some, uh, I don't know, like a Bloody Mary because they're all gingers. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. I love Bloody Mary. Perry, you're always welcome here. Uh, We brought you on today, obviously, because later in the show, we're going to talk about the Orphan Black series finale, the entire series, really. I know, Perry, you're the one that, honestly, you're the one that turned me on to that show. You I'm are the one so that excited to talk about it, and y- I mean, you saw my face when I finished watching yeah. the final episode of the flushed. series. It's, You're flush. Yeah, it, flush. It, it, it's it's sad. It's a heart one. Sad heart to one. see something like that go. I know. Uh, we're also going to talk a little Mr. Mercedes, but we have all kinds of fun stuff to get to. Somebody tweeted at me a really funny story that I can't wait to talk about, but first, <laughs> Grace... What is up? All right. So first, uh, yesterday, HBO released a batch of images from this Sunday's upcoming 70-minute episode, Beyond the Wall, teasing the penultimate episode of the penultimate season. Whoa. Double penultimate. Right? Double point. Cody, hit the double penultimate button. (laughs) Oh, uh, we don't have it. Just hit the Poldark button. Go Poldark. Go Poldark. (laughs) Ah, Go! Almost had it. Oh, man. Saucy Thursdays <laughs> is off to a really strong start. So, I mean, Game of Thrones often the second to last or penultimate episode is really like a crazy town. Good. I know. Red Wedding. So I'm so, yeah. Um, so I'm, what are you guys hoping to see? I'm well, so excited. This is, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen beyond the wall. I, I don't. And I appreciate all of the people who have not tweeted me any spoilers. And the one person that did try to, I blocked you, so you're welcome. Um, and I'm not going <laughs> to com- I'm that, not gonna be confronted at a, at, a, at a Comic-Con to tell you to unblock. I will never unblock you. Spoiling Game of Thrones is the... Uh, I mean, Ultimate it, sin. It's, it's terrible. In, in a TV world, you're an awful person. Go somewhere, go to therapy, or just go get run over by Mr. Mercedes. I don't care. <laughs> what I'm saying oh is that you shouldn't spoil Game of Thrones. It's not cool, and it's not nice. Based on these pictures, though, two dragons, uh, an imp, and a queen. Hmm. Not too shabby. That is the picture of the thing. This is a glory. I mean, her cos- the costume design in the show is just so phenomenal. I literally, yeah. like, that's literally the second thing I talk about most other than all the incest. It yeah. is nice to see her wearing white, too. I feel like the large majority of the women in the show have lost all of their color, and mm-hmm. they pretty much have just been dressing in all exactly. black. This is why I love it. They have, episode. like, weird studs everywhere, 100%. and they all are, like, witchy necks up to here, and yeah. I'm like, yes. So I think, I mean... Obviously, beyond the wall, somebody's going to have to die. At least a couple guys you think? In, the, in the Magnificent Seven. Yeah, there's I, no way it's just one though. It's not just one. I mean, I, oh god, am I? I would cry? be really destroyed if Tormund died. Uh, no, uh, I want him and Gwendolyn Christie. I, know, I just want all I the know. hookups to happen on this show, but and I want to apologize. You're for a it. shipper. Huh? I'm you're a, a shipper. Sh- apparently, yeah. yeah, I'm a new, I'm a shipper. But a couple of them have to die. I, I am really looking forward to how this fight goes down, and I'm looking forward to seeing if a dragon actually comes out of nowhere and rescues them as well. Like and like just Tyrion, melts all the Tyrion ice and convinces then ruins her. The wall. Hey, let's ride a dragon out beyond the wall and see if this is true. Like, let's forget sending seven guys. Let's send a dragon out there, and they see him. And it's like. <laughs> And they take out some dead people. But knowing my uh, anticipation of things and my predictions in TV are 100% usually wrong, that probably won't It's not the worst (laughs) prediction in the world, though, because when I saw this article where it's like, oh, look at all the new Game of Thrones images, I thought that they were just going to be the guys beyond the wall. The fact that, you know, we have a little Sansa in there. And I'm I'm interested in that storyline just because I'm really interested in seeing, like, Arya and Sansa just get along and put that to bed but when you do show me Tyrion and Daenerys yeah. that does make me think like what else would they I mean they, they have other like things to talk about yes. but you would think top priority on their brains would would be oh our guys are up there and they're probably gonna die what can we do to help them so I don't think that's so out of left field but my horror loving brain dreams of an episode that was really just about them watching them all get picked off one by one and then being left with Jon Snow yeah Oh, Damn, well, yeah. that got dark real fast. I can't dark. help it. Saucy, Shocker. Saucy Saucy Thursday Thursday just uh, a, a, a lover of nightmares <laughs> went dark. Went dark. All right, what's next, Grace? 
Um, okay, so the Jetsons is getting a live action put pilot uh, at ABC with Bob Zemeckis. I have absolutely nothing but joy in reaction to this because I don't know how the hell they're going to do it, and I'm totally down. <laughs> what are you guys, right there? What are you doing? What are we doing as a people? What are we doing? With our, te- like, Me, George are, are there not enough ideas out there with over 500 scripted series? 500. Yeah. That we're like, you know what? Let's do, because I, I guarantee you, the only way to really do this, honestly, the only way to really do this is a multi cam laugh track sitcom. You can't do single camera. Mm. They're like, let's go out in the space sphere. You can't do it. You, if you're going to do a half hour comedy on ABC, network television cannot do that. They're not like they're not going to spend an enormous amount on a show that may or may not get canceled. I mean, it may not even go into series. All we know is it's getting a pilot. Okay. You're right. <laughs> this I don't show know. Was shot as a cartoon in 1962, and they're like, "Look at the brrr, flying cars, and we have a robot made." Are you kidding me? Live action, live action. I would rather watch the monsters than the Jetsons. Oh. I'm sorry. It's stupid. It's really dumb. It's dumb. I it's mean, not I'm not hearing that everything it's you're terrible. saying. It's terrible. No, it's not. Why? I, Tell well, me. Well, I okay. The answering of the question "why" is always difficult, just because the climate we're in right now is like remake, reboot, sequel, nonstop. Let's just get some original stuff. That's where my mind immediately goes. Sure. But if we're stuck in this kind of situation where we're going to keep getting repeat material, you want space parents. You know, and the I, family. I grew up watching a whole lot of Jetsons. I loved it. I you loved, loved it, it for its nostalgia purposes, and it was a '60s not cartoon. True. No, I've I've rewatched episodes here and there, and I still have some fun with it. And I think there is a way to update it in a way where, if they go live action, it could suit a modern audience. They do have the multicam thing in place, so at least there's that. The only thing that I think is a major risk where it might not work is is Astro there. The dog. I'm curious to see how they treat that character, but I really look at all of the sci-fi stuff, Listen. whether we're talking about horror or comedy or anything, it's it's possible they could pull this off well, especially with Robert Zemeckis involved. A lot of people are going to argue with me, like, look at the Orville, the trailer for the Orville was something. I mean, that's basically a Star Trek ripoff to a certain extent. This is supposed to be like a family sitcom in a, in a new world where they fly around in cars and stuff. Shooting that single cam, you're looking at all kinds of terrible green screen. When is green screen on TV in a comedy ever looked good? They still put cars in a green screen cyclone and they like run the neighbor's thing by. They're not doing actual car stuff because they need to shoot it. They need to be done with it. It's going to look terrible, Perry. I'm sorry. I would rather go back and watch Jetson's cartoons, which probably do not hold up. They're probably making like Richard Nixon jokes for Christ's sake. And... <laughs> We're going to get, like, okay, listen. The Talking Dog in Downward Dog, amazing. My new best friend. I'm I, That breaking, the, the cancellation of that show broke my heart. You can't. You can, <sighs> I, I'm hearing everything you're saying. These are valid points. Let's move on. I'm sorry. You are heard. Yelled. You are heard in this safe yeah, space, Joshua. Yes, okay. Um, well, we'll see what happens. I'll be, I, I'm very curious to see how they pull it off. Sorry, um, you, but moving along to <laughs> <take it>. something <laughs> else, HBO comedy vice principals released a new trailer for its final nine episodes that will air this fall, starting on September 17th, concluding its 18 episode arc that was spread out over two seasons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you what? watch, do you watch vice principals? You know, I never finished it, but okay. I watched, uh, I think I watched like three or four episodes because okay. I covered it when it premiered at South by Southwest like two years ago. And yeah. I got to talk to Danny McBride and Walton Goggins. Yeah. The two of them are just such a delight. And that is hands down my favorite interview Instagram photo I've ever taken in my life. Remind me, to, I should have okay. brought it here yeah. so yeah. I can actually show yeah. it to you. I, I want to see it. Is, out of it it is hands it, down Barry. one of the <laughs> funniest <laughs> Cody things. Is legit uh, sorry, Cody is legit. Adam I'm just sorry. walked out of the studio. Cody just tipped over the table. Oh, God, God, God we're on it. our own. But I will say, even though I didn't finish Vice Principals because I was probably, I had to watch something else for whatever reason, I wanted to finish the first season. And even though I didn't finish the first season, watching the season two trailer still makes me want to go back and watch more and that's really unusual for a season two trailer when you haven't watched all of season one right so i give them credit for this this show has everything that is weird about everything in it right (laughs) it's like it's it's high school it's danny mcbride and walton goggins they have like a hate love for each other there's mystery there's intrigue there's awkward sex there's there's like a family dynamic it is they're honestly this show is so underrated because not enough people, not enough people really watched it. Had it not shot the next nine episodes, I don't know if HBO would have given it another nine episodes because legit, not that many people watched it. Yeah, it flew under the radar. It for really, sure. really did. But this show is, I, I, again, every time I watched an episode, I was like, 
I, what? <laughs> I love like bashful Josh. Like, oh my god! Like, it, it, because I I don't know. There's just something so perfect about Danny McBride's comedy in this setting. He's never different in any movie. I sure. mean, I didn't watch Alien Covenant most because I know what happens. They go to space. The aliens eat him. Um, he but is very good in that. I'm Spoilers. Sure he's, I'm sure he's good, but. Danny McBride, <laughs> in, in comedy wise, it very rarely plays like a different character. He is so different in this show, but the same at the same time. It's like there's, I, I don't know. It's really hard to describe. But this trailer, regardless of season two, now it has a mystery. It has a murder. It has shooting. It has taxi driver. <laughs> it's so silly. Trailer is perfect. Well, and there's only nine episodes. Like that's a totally yeah. doable. Like I can, yeah. Eighteen total yeah, episodes. They all show. No, I, I really will yeah. consider. Like yeah. you can actually putting this do in it. my yeah. binge watching schedule, do which it. continues to grow and grow and grow every single oh, day. Yeah, it's not at all <laughs> overwhelming or stressful. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving right along. Where's my mimosa? All right. Sorry. TNT is developing, and I apologize, I'm probably going to butcher the shit out of this. TNT is developing N.K. Jemison's sci-fi fantasy novel, The Fifth Season, into a Makes series sense. with uh, Lee Dana Jackson set to write. It's uh, book one of a trilogy, all of which have already been published, so we can all go binge read those in all of our free time. It's described as an epic drama set in a world where civiliz civilization destroying earthquakes occur with deadly regularity. And apparently some of the people have the ability to stop them, but their powers might, al might also start them, and it follows three women who have these supernatural powers. Gotta be honest. Sounds like we're running out of ideas for books. <laughs> like, they can make earthquakes, I mean, but they also can cause gonna... them. Yeah, it's like a weird gray area. It's like, so they're like always they kind all of have maybe powers? can't control it. Well, the three well, main women who that we follow do. Wait until you Google this a little further, because oh, that's what I did. Go the, on. The source article, I, th I think that little log line is kind of intriguing. And then yeah. I kind of fell into the black hole of Googling and trying to find, you know, more in depth synopsis I'd for like something to look like at this. Your Google search sometimes. <laughs> it's so okay. weird. It's I so, bet. it's either <laughs> things related to TV, movies, or, or cats. cats. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Grace. <laughs> either either, You're that, either You're that or when is creation going to deliver to my door <laughs> um, but there, there's a lot of complicated things there's like some sort of super continent called the stillness I really I started to called google and I started to write down notes so that I could very clearly express what this book is really about what the series is really about and I kind of couldn't put the pieces together so okay. what really no, makes me so to it's TV. too convoluted is, is what it you're it's saying I don't know. It could work. I can't really assess it until I actually give the book a shot. Really, the only thing that is making me hopeful about this is that this book and this book series really won like a ton a of awards. Ton of awards. If it's yeah. winning all of those awards, then clearly good, there right? there's something there that works. Yeah. And you know, maybe once I burn through all my Star Wars books and my Stephen King books, maybe I'll put this on the list. I know. Yeah, By the time we're all 90, TV. we can read those. The point I, of you know, this I show was thinking is about just <laughs> and picking up remotes. Okay. I was I thinking know. about just not sleeping yeah. and just binging everything yeah. all day long. You think that's a, a proper way to live my life? Yes. Yeah, I, I already do that. And then I fall asleep literally with my script in my hand yesterday, like a 90 year old woman. I literally did one of my things that my mom does where she just goes like this, and that was me. I just can't out. tell you how many times I've been watching something on my phone and falling asleep. And <laughs> yeah. I can't I tell you. It's, when you have an iPhone Plus, that hurts. Like I know. I know. Sure like does. this bad boy. I'm like, yeah. I have a concussion, but I finished. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right. So I know Perry's very <gasps> excited. BBC's award-winning series Orphan Black ended its five-season run this past Saturday night with a surprisingly happy, I mean, happy, sad, bittersweet, but happy ending as far as plot yeah. um, with Sarah, spoiler alert, finally taking out P.T. Westmoreland. Yes. Perry. Oh, and or go all by. the illusion, basically. This, this show, because it's it's definitely a different feeling, and it, it it almost makes you feel like you're part of the production, even though I had nothing to do with making anything in the show whatsoever. <laughs> but when you start with something from day one, when it really had next to no fans, it started nothing. to build, it started to hit Comic-Cons, Tatiana Maslany started to be in the, the running for awards consideration, something about sticking with a show that long and then having it come to a close, you have just a ton invested. And when it's ripped away from you, it hurts no matter how strong it 100%. ended. But I am, right. I am so, so thankful that I've invested so much time in a series that, you know, some episodes obviously were not as good as others. But really, this show has kept the bar at a certain level, if not higher, from start to finish. And it is such a respectful way to wrap up that was... So like really a very convoluted sci-fi style mystery. Very? It was like extremely convoluted. By the it, fifth, by the last was, season, I was like, who are we fighting? I don't was, remember who we're fighting. <laughs> it was season four into the first half of season five that some of the details yeah. started to get 
yeah, really a little too difficult yeah. to track. But I think what made it work overall as a show is that even though some of those details were complicated, it always came down to the idea of family and just being sisters. And that's yeah. what it was all about. And that's how the show ended. It 100%. brought them all together. And it is so refreshing to see a series and in a way that isn't an aha moment. Look, it's a big finish. We got to spend 30 minutes with them teasing what their life will really be after this whole thing. And right. as a, a longtime fan, it was just insanely satisfying. I'm heartbroken that it's going, but I'm happy it went this way. I, um, you know, you were the, again, like I said at the beginning of the show, you were the one that turned me on to this show, and I can't thank you enough. And, and this is one of the few, few shows that I've shared with the future misses because I watch TV way too fast for her to catch up. Like, I tried to get her into Justified. She couldn't do it. I tried to get into Game of Thrones. Couldn't do it. But this one, she and I both, like, watched every episode together. We binged it. It was when, we, like, we first started dating, and I was obsessed with the show. And I still, and I love the way that this show ended because it had a very heartfelt ending in, in a show that was very dark at points. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the people that needed to die died in a really cool way. And I know that's, like, a really dark thing to say. But Agreed. How, how this show actually maintained everything is, I, I don't know if I can, it, how I would have to look at a lot of other different performances, but there isn't a show that I've ever watched where one person absolutely, if, they, if Tatiana Maslany isn't in that role, I don't know another actress out there that I've ever seen that could really do it because you forget, you honestly mm -hmm. forget that she's playing those roles. Well, I don't look it's, at yeah. them as just Tatiana Maslany. I look at them as their... As it's Helena Sarah, and Sarah, Helena, and Allison, Allison Kasima. Yeah. I love them all for such distinct reasons. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think you know, you got to give props to the writers. You got to give... Pro but you really have to give props to the writers for the fifth season because the fourth season really didn't end with a cliffhanger and they needed yeah. to get you somewhere while also like dragging out some episodes. And I think that they were like, shit, maybe we should have ended in the fourth season or something like that because the first three or four episodes were very slow, very yeah. convoluted, very who, what is happening. And then by the end, they reeled you back in because they were they finally made this P.T. Westmoreland more of a... Because when I was around him, I didn't feel the stakes, mostly because I felt like... Mm that he wasn't going to do it. Like, he wasn't mm -hmm. going to kill anybody. But we got to that stakes part, and we got to the finale, and we got to those, those final death scenes again, and it was I, it paid off. It paid off. Those death scenes. The the Miss S one, Yeah, it, it crushed me. Oh, it yeah. crushed me. Broke I sat there, like, absolutely weeping for a little while, I which I too. don't normally do. But I'll agree with you. I think the part that made it a little difficult for me to get into season five was the island stuff, particularly that community. I think it was fine with the PT Westmoreland thing, yeah. just because that was so well connected to all the other clones. I had a very hard time getting into the community around it 100%. and really, really kind of understanding to a point that I found it satisfying yeah. why he would do that kind of thing. Like I, I obviously knew because they laid it out, but I didn't really care. No, so I'm that was you. a little bit of and a problem. All, I, when it was over, I was like, what happened to all the people on the island? The second, well, I don't yeah. really care. The second we got that episode, though, where it was mostly about Rachel and we got the flashbacks I'm like wow this is a lot of great late in the game character awesome. development that couldn't be better at this moment and right after and that episode that. holy crap they just flew to the end for sure I, I gotta say this may be one of the most underrated series that's been on TV in maybe the last 10 years and definitely the most underrated performance on TV mm -hmm. in Tatiana Maslany. I know she won the Emmy last year, and you're like, it's not underrated. She should have won an Emmy for every season she was on that Yeah, show. I really mean, she's playing have. 89 characters, and I can't even imagine as an actor how odd and lonely it would be to have eight of your castmates be your damn self. Yeah, I know. Because you're just acting with stand-ins. Half stand the time, and yeah, yeah. Like, it's a totally different set dynamic, and just crazy. Like, I can't hardly keep my shit straight playing one character. Mm -hmm. like, it is well worth giving impressive. some of the supporting characters a lot of credit, though. Like, Donnie and I mean, Arthur. Really and they they all turned into something and you know I think in season one art was one of the ones that I'm like okay I was like you're working for me but I don't really love you you know you're not one of my right. favorite characters and by the end how he works into their whole agenda awesome. he he had a great ending too a lot of cops yeah. a lot of times in this show got a really bad rap and they weren't good people but he stayed good throughout uh, I dug it I, I again uh, I can't recommend Orphan Black yeah. more and thanks Perry for coming on to talk about it because I got our clone club fix oh yeah yay well and it's such a great it's such a I mean it's so empowering and like strength yes. of women it's just a great it's a great time for the show to be uh, to be out and I'm, I loved it All right, um, but now we're going to move on to one of my very favorite new shows and I know everybody thinks I'm a creep for saying that because I'm a dark weirdo <laughs> but Mr. Mercedes on Audience Network I think is so fantastic and last night we had the original uh, yeah I mean who knew and I'm so we were talking about this a little bit off air Every single one of these characters, when they go off screen, I'm like, but where are they going? Like, what are they? Like, they're such full, dynamic, fleshed out characters. Mm -hmm. I totally believe. I'm like, but where does she go after this? 
Like, no. It's so good. I don't understand why he's not telling his cop buddy that he's getting these emails. I love that it's he's so brought in his lawn guy who's a genius, right? Yeah. I love that. I love that <laughs> dynamic. Genius lawn guy. Genius I need one of boy. those. Yeah, I was a lawn boy for a while. I'm not a genius. But um, <laughs> I... Uh, I I love their I love their dynamic. Uh, I, I, there was something really powerful about us knowing who it is. Mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. angle that we're not like it could be him, it could be him. I love yeah. us knowing that it's that person and figuring out how they're going to get to that person because I, you know, Mary Louise Parker wasn't she was fine, but an amazing addition to the cast and the fact that like he has now has another partner in this whole freaking thing. The well, cool thing about knowing who it is is it actually makes him a little more dangerous. It's like you're not wrapped up in the mystery of who he is. You're wrapped up in the fact that you know what he's capable of. You see him working and you see that he has the upper hand. I also think he's not telling uh, Pete is his name, I mm -hmm. think, because he's probably afraid he's going to pull the case out from under him. If he yeah. gives well, him all that says, evidence, that's a good they're going to... That's a good call. I yeah, and that. he says a little bit to Mary Louise Parker that he's like, I don't necessarily trust that they're going to do anything about it. So you're mm -hmm. like, no, because we're watching it and you're like, please tell them, but you know they're not going to do anything. It's going to go bad. No. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> that's literally me like yeah. putting on like getting ready in the morning like no <laughs> I am so um, happy you put this on the lineup today though because yeah. I wasn't planning on watching it but now I did and when you go into that first episode not really knowing what this is wow that cold open that, that, is, that, dark, that is dark stuff it's a it's a rough watch and he is so good in this role. I know he's I don't so know it's like I knew he was a good actor I don't know why I'm so shocked but Really, just the amount of character development they accomplish in two episodes. And I love the way it's shot, too. Like, there's so much uh, roving cameras, but I yeah. love the way that his apartment and Harry Treadway's apartment are shot. So it's like instantly, in just two episodes, you already feel like they're home. It's yeah. it's really lived in. You see little bits of their personality all over the place. So detailed. And they're, and he's so unexpectedly funny. Like, he's yeah. so... Like, when he types in, he's like, hey, fuckhead. I yeah. literally laughed out loud. Yeah. Like, it's hilarious. What? you never seen an old man talking to himself yeah. before? <laughs> I move out of He's just like this like grouchy old. I yeah. love it. He, it's it's so so. I'm, so I'm good. hooked on this show. I didn't think I was. I was because as soon as I see Stephen King, I automatically turn away and I'm like, mm. I'll go watch a couple yeah. episodes of Parks and Rec and cleanse the palate. But <laughs> this is this is really uh, a very very dynamic show, and I'm, I'm loving, especially our friend in the in the. Uh, the electronic store, Brita. What's the actual Oh my God, Brita uh, Wool. And I was talking yeah. about this. She is my favorite redhead on TV right now. She's I, crushing I it. don't care if it's dyed or fake. She is crushing it. She is totally my MVP. She's you know who so she funny. reminds me of? Uh, Mackenzie Davis from Halt and Catch Fire. Boom. And it might just be that's because what she we said. just said. Helen has yeah. short hair. Really? Yeah. That's exactly that's what, what we that's said. That's all I yeah. see when I look at her. But I, I do really I mean, like her performance. I mean, it's a similar 100%. kind of role, like kind of like a <laughs> muted, but like witty and kind of dry. We both said it immediately. Immediately. Yeah, we're all on the same page, okay. and it's Love really it. sweet, you guys. <laughs> um, all right, um, before we go on to Twitter questions, we're going to do uh, yeah, we're going to do week. some uh, yeah. perform of the week with our friend Allison, who should be coming to LA soon. What? Uh, maybe yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> like on air peer pressure. Yeah, let's say yeah, yes, please. So we're going to go to perform of the week with Allison Keen. Hey everybody, I'm Collider.com TV editor Allison Keen here with another edition of TV Perform of the Week. Contrary to popular belief, there are actually a lot of great TV shows on right now other than Game of Thrones, but Game of Thrones is again winning this award as my pick is Liam Cunningham, who plays Davos Seaworth, aka The Onion Knight. So there have been some detractors who didn't like the fact that Davos has been turned into a walking meme for the show, like when he actually said out loud to Gendry, I thought you were still rowing, a longtime Game of Thrones in-joke. And also he's been goading Jon Snow about him having a crush on Daenerys, but he's really just kind of acting like the cool uncle on the show right now, and I'm totally fine with it. He's a pretty unlikely survivor, even though he is known as an expert smuggler. Davos has changed sides a few times, but we know him as a solid guy and someone who stands up for what's right. But what really made me pick Cunningham's performance this week is that he is currently the only person on the show who looks like he's having fun. Davos provided some great comic relief in this past episode, Eastwatch, particularly in the scene when he was attempting to smuggle Gendry and his Warhammer out of King's Landing. There were quite a few quotes of the week just from his exchange with the soldiers, but it went beyond that. He was so charming and lively, and frankly, it was a little surprising to see anyone emote that much on the show. But it was a great thing. And now he's going beyond the wall with Jon Snow and their motley crew who sort of teleported up there, or so it seems. And I'm really hoping he doesn't die. But he had such a fantastic episode in East Watch that I'm a little afraid now. Davos is a character who in the books gets his own point of view stories and they're often really, really boring. But Cunningham has truly imbued this character with so much personality that he has become a fan favorite. 
We may not always remember that Davos is around, but when he shows up, I know I'm not the only one who's glad to see him. So that's my pick for TV Performer of the Week, Liam, Liam Cunningham for Game of Thrones. Makuga, may the seven bless you. Thank you, Alison Crean. It's a hell of a job. That's my Liam Cunningham accent. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, already then. Oh, wow. <laughs> I try. I that have it. Rough. Well, every now and then, so I'll get a rough. word in Wait, here or there. The but do the dragon. Recover. <laughs> <laughs> and now we all forgot the oh, My favorite ready. part is that the dragon's always like confused. Like yeah. he's always looking around, like, oh. why am I here? Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. You got it. Let's do a Twitter oh, question, man. Gracie. All right. Uh we are gonna do um from our friend SE O'Donnell, who wants to know who are our guys' favorite TV show villains? Well I have one. I mine is Wilson Fisk in Daredevil. That's uh, a good pick. Uh you know, um, What's his name? Uh, the actor that plays the guy. Come on. Oh, uh, Vincent man. D'Onofrio. Not, yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio is incredible in that role. Uh, I really loved uh, Manu Bennett as Deathstroke in season uh, two of Arrow, like one-ish two of Arrow. Um, yeah. Uh, let me think about it for a second. But yeah, those are two of my faves. Yeah, I was going to go and I get, uh, like, I'm totally have like David Tennant fever, but I just adored him and Jessica Jones yeah. because I, you see him in something like Broadchurch where he's such an empathetic character, like maybe yeah. a little gruff, but like you're so in love with him and you're so interested in like his emotional. And then you see something like Jessica Jones and you're like, I hate you and you're a bad man. Yeah, like yeah. he's just so dynamic and what great. So that's what I was going to say. I'm pretty much going to have to go with the obvious and say uh, Lena Hetty in Game of Thrones. She oh! is just. I mean, it, it is fascinating whether you take a, a like a love to hate her approach yeah. or you I know, love e her. Even though she is pure evil, it's really something else to be able to get inside of that kind of character's heads and just see the wheels turning. And you know what she's capable of and you know what direction she's probably going in. But the way that they surprise you every episode, there's a couple of moments in last week's episode where I thought she was going to react to certain news one way and she didn't. What she did yeah. was still really in character, exactly but it's not what, what I about. expected, and, then and that she doesn't blew happen. Up the entire cast of Game of Thrones. That too. So it was literally, and again, it make, Game of Thrones makes me question what kind of person I am because literally, like, I was literally watching it, and I was like, oh, and then her just like smirking and drinking some wine, and I was like, yes, like I love her, and I'm a horrible person. <laughs> hate and I'm to love, okay love to hate. There you go. Good, some good villains. Good but villains. Yeah, that's all we got time for today. We're yeah, we go do. For it's a, a little up. Do you want to? Yeah. Oh boy. Pick of the day. Pick of the day. Uh, okay. Who had a better New York living situation, Seinfeld or Friends? Well, I'm definitely going to go with Friends for a couple different reasons. First of all, my, like, OC, like, I hate that apartment. It is so cluttered and horrible. But there's so many of them. It's like if I need help with paleontology or if I need help with cooking, like, all the things I can't do, one of them can do. Okay. Yeah, so my brain immediately goes to what? What is the most practical way to live your life in Manhattan? <laughs> One and, bedroom. Well, <laughs> shoebox. It, it's it's tough. It's tough, and I would have to go with anything that is rent controlled. Ah, uh, yes. So the finale. There you go. Friends. I mean, I will also say in they friends, had yeah, a freaking maid. They had an outdoor patio, which nobody else had. But then Cr Kramer also did have the rooftop where he had the hot tub, and he baked himself with the butter. <laughs> So again, the outdoor it, patio is kind of BS though, because if you look at it from the street, I don't think it actually makes it's, sense. It's also, like a fire escape, basically. to live yeah. to oh. live anywhere above a restaurant in Manhattan is yeah. no. gross. Just don't do it. I it's know. not going to pan out. Well. I lived above a uh, the landmark cafe and diner on the corner of Grand and Lafayette for two years. We I had we know had roach place. bombs once a month. Yep. Yeah. Wait, so well, it goes, especially they, they, when you, you live above one of those diners. And they would roach bomb your apartment so that because Ooh, no! to keep them away. Yeah, because they're everywhere. Oh, they you just ruined everywhere. my life. All yep. right, that'll do it for us here roach on the Collider bombs. TV Talk Saucy Thursday. We may be bringing in some booze. I don't know. It's a little early in the morning here on the West Coast. Nah. Plus, we have to work the rest of the day, which nah. means no naps. Uh, <laughs> I'm Josh McCuga. I'll be here every day, 11 a.m. PST. Uh, also joining me today, Perry Nemiroff, where can the good people find you on the internet? Just so you know, it's never too early for a mimosa. That's true. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at P. Nemiroff. Watch out for Collider Behind the Scenes and Bloopers this Saturday, 2 p.m. PST. Thanks we for having me, BTS guys. Bloopers. Thanks <gasps> for I being here, P. Nemi, 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 love you long time. Oh. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm Grace Hancock. You can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face. And I'm Josh McCuga, at Josh McCuga, Twitter and Instagram, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube, every Monday night, WGN Movies for America. We'll be back here tomorrow with Shnasty, Sinead DeFries doing her synopsis of Game of Thrones, talking all things fun and DeFree style. Grace will be here as well, always, because she's the best and she's our mother of ginger dragons. <laughs> as always, guys, put down the book, pick up the remote. 
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.